hello hello everyone welcome back to another video in this video i'll be sharing with you how i landed or how i got my very first job here in Toronto, canada and one thing i want you to know is that i know that i have done a video regarding um how i broke into the tonalities and now this was when i was back in nigeria however in this video i'll let you know or telling you how i actually got a role here in canada right and i also have done a video about the interview questions i also encountered and i'll probably put it here right so please ensure to go and um watch it because it's literally questions that i knew that I actually encountered whilst applying for a guitar analyst role here in canada and i literally had to document all those for you or for whoever get a job here in Toronto or in canada generally not just Toronto, right so now before moving on one thing i want you to know is that prior to me getting a job while i was just in nigeria i ensured that i literally was already applying for roles right i also had to like build relationships and networks but before i go into that i want the important thing i want to let you know is that in building relationship and network i had to also foster this relationship and network right so what this means was you could just be me going to a company's website and then going through the employees that are currently working there and then send a message asking them what the role is like and what the role as the data analyst actually entails in their current place of work and also learning from them and let me tell you so that people will respond to you like in months right granted but at the very least you know that you are building this relationship and networks right and that's why i would 100 percent recommend that having a professional network on a platform like linkedin is very important because there you're able to also get companies and also able to get employees as well so and build this meaningful relationship now to my very first point i'll love to point out the fact that here in canada there's something called a canadian resume right so what this means is that there's a format to your resume should actually be if you're applying for a job in Canada, right? And this for me was really new to me. It was different. I mean, I'm coming from a place where resume format is not really a thing. So far, you're able to highlight and let the employer know that you have the skills. But here, I come to see that there's something called a resume format was literally new to me. And I also like put how my resume format is, like how the Canadian resume format is here and the resume I used to apply for jobs here in Canada, right? During this process, it was a new one to me, but I had to learn. So what this means is that with new location, new places comes a new and different way, different things have been done. And it was very important for me to be able to be willing to adapt to that process, right? And I did that and I started pushing out my application. Now, the second point in terms of my process of applying into jobs was I got to know about a program called AWS Restart, right? AWS Restart is um, a program or initiative from the Canadian government, right? For new immigrants or people are looking to break into tech. So in this AWS Restart, it's a very good program because in here, and I think I would really like advice for anyone who wants to break into tech or someone who has a PR or whatever status, however, to look into this program because here you're learning something for free and also being paid learning. Um, for this program as well to write. So AWS Restart is more like um, a program where you learn about the cloud technologies in AWS. And after you're done, you're also expected to take the certification as well too. And it's paid for by the Canadian government. So it's something that you really want to look into if this interests you and this for cloud skills, right? But then so something I started doing in between while I was also like applying for jobs as well to write. And unfortunately, I didn't even get any of the money or the stipend uh, because I got a job uh, if I haven't completed the program itself. And so it just goes to tell you like how soon I actually got my job, right? Yeah, I got a job like outside of the AWS Restart program. But if prior to the time you do not have a um, job, I would highly recommend that you go through this route because it's free. So if I have an internet and it's always light here in Canada, you're able to connect and learn one or two things with the AWS service. And note that this is not because I'm an AWS company, but this is just supposed to show how far AWS actually is looking to invest in a lot of people who are looking to break into tech, right? Especially so learn account skills. So now I'm going to tell you about a few things I actually had to focus on. I think that I had some experience in data and analytics before coming into Canada. These are just a few things that I basically had to focus on. So I was coming from a finance role, a fintech background, and I knew that I sort of wanted to switch industries right and i know that data and analytics skills is a skill whereby it cuts across different um industries so whatever knowledge you have in finance or in education sector healthcare se sector can be applied to any other industry right i currently work in the telecommunication sector which is pretty new to me it is new to me first because of the fact that 
the system in which telecommunication operates in Nigeria is different from the system in which it's been done here in Canada. So that's a whole total domain entirely, right? Like it is so different, guys. And having to learn that new system, as well as having to even learn how to apply that knowledge and data analysis, is pretty new. So that was something that actually quite challenging for me, but I knew that I was looking forward to taking up that particular um, skill set. So what I did was that I applied to, I literally did not restrict myself to any goals. I was open and flexible to all the roles, but one, one industry that I knew that I didn't really want to go into was healthcare because of personal reasons actually, right? As well as also working with roles that was um, tilted towards mobile development. So any role that is literally, that has to do with building a mobile service, a mobile tool, because I literally came from a role that had to do with having a mobile product that we were working on, right? I was, I really enjoyed that role and I loved the fact that I could also see potential in also working in another um, role whereby it's also based on the mobile services that's been provided and I literally worked on that particularly. So yeah, a few things I actually like did focus on when considering the, the company I wanted to work for was very importantly was um, ensuring that the role itself had um, a very good pay. Now this one is very important when you go signing a job offer and also understanding like what their state of work is right is right so is it a remote school i mean it's also flexible as well so this was something that i also wanted to see and also because i was going to also break it into industry i wanted something that was literally different from my previous role and i also wanted something sort of similar now in the sense that i knew that i didn't want to work for any 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 company that is consulting I do not even like it, right? Because you're having to leverage with others with external stakeholders. I love working for companies that literally have a product that they're selling, right? Because that way you know that you're working on a on, on a product and ensuring that it scales, right? But however, working with um consulting firms feels more like an outsource kind of work for me personally. And there could be like high like in terms of like strict deadlines and the likes, that could be something that you'd have to experience because you're working with a consulting firm. And because I was coming from a company whereby um, it was more product based than service based, I really loved that space. I was looking forward to going to a company that was also more product based and also a company whereby it was a mobile service being rendered as well. So, so currently, my role um, is a telecommunication um, service that we actually do render in telecommunication space. So, pretty much, that actually surmises what my current role as a data analyst does, right? And that was a few things that I really like and why I even signed this job offer. And also in addition, one thing I love was the fact that it also allowed um, learning budgets allocated to each employee as well to, to learn something new. So for me, who is really new to the communication space, I knew that I needed more knowledge as to how even things are being done here, right? So recently in a coffee chat I had with someone in the team, I learned a lot about how that in terms of installing of fiber network rights, micro trenching and the lights. And this is something that I literally had no idea about, but with these conversations I do have, I'm able to have a better understanding as to how this whole telecommunication industry works, right? And it's something that I learned and I'm continually learning every single day. And it's pretty interesting, right? So while I was here and five I could got my current role, I actually did interview for another telecommunication company here in Canada, a very big one for that matter. And um there they use a particular tool called Microsoft Power BI and this is a tool that I speak a lot about here on my YouTube channel and I first did a no no your mouth phone screen interview and then to do your, your technical assessment interview and while I was while I did that interview I learned a lot of things and also learned how that even beyond just being a data analyst it's very important for you to have critical analytical skills right as it applies to the industry very important like it is very very important so for the fact that data analytics skills that cuts across like different domains it's also very important for you to know that how do you apply your analysis in a particular domain right and not just generic and this was something that i learned in my very first um, interview i had with this company i also interviewed with other companies i interviewed with banks but the bank salary at the time wasn't even friendly at, at all and you literally have to come to work every single day and one thing i know personally is that i'm not someone who like going to like anything that has to do with bank because of how the banking system in nigeria was i don't even want it i mean the thought of having to wake up early going to work i mean that's the notion i have about banks like working in bank in nigeria right 
and the whole traffic that happens but it's, it's not like there's a lot of traffic here in canada right but i sort of already had that painted image of how working in a bank is so it just you know i like i just did not want anything back so yes i had people reach out to me reach out to me for a data analyst offer in a bank i mean popular banks here in canada rbc cibc scotia bank as well too TV banks, there are quite a couple of banks here, but um, also I noticed that Saturday was not even friendly, like it wasn't really nice at the time, so I decided not to go for anything bank because I didn't want to work in the banking sector at all. Yes, they have fintech data, I mean, that's something I read about a lot, but for me, I did just want that kind of um, banking industry to work with personally. So now I'm going to talk about how, where to even apply for jobs and how I went about applying for jobs. So the very first platform I always recommend is LinkedIn, very important. Ensure you build your professional um, profile on LinkedIn and have all your skills, have the company work for, make sure it's up to date as well as a bio that introduces what your skill does, right? Another platform is also Indeed. Indeed, with Indeed, you get a lot of recruiters actually reaching out to you telling you that, oh, there's a particular company that's good for a, for a role, blah, 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 blah. Are you interested? And then you follow up on you to ensure that you have interviews with this company, right? Indeed is a platform that gives everyone person should probably have a profile on as well too. And also going there once in a while to apply for jobs. And additionally, I would say that I also looked into, um, I mean, company websites. I actually highly recommend you apply directly to a company website rather than any link that you can receive. So if, for example, there's a job posting, it's just important for you to go directly to the company that has this listing and apply directly. That's one, one particular uh, way I actually leverage on my application. Now I'm going to speak to you about my interview process and how I went about my interview process, right? So for some companies, you literally, you're literally asked to do, like after the whole phone screen interview, you're also asked to either do like a, a technical interview at that instance, or you're sent a link, like a take home assessment to do. And that was my case. I was given a take home assessment to do. I worked on it. After working on it, I got feedback um, to the next stage. After I did that, I was also, as I did that, I was also scheduled to reach out to meet my brother team that I'm working with. So with the engineers, article engineers, and um, the data analysis well in the team. And then I also had interview with my direct manager and then my manager manager as well too, which was like a chill conversation. And um, very important for you to note is that during these interviews, most of the questions I actually spoke in my data and uh, my interview questions that I have in my YouTube channel, most of them was what actually came out. And these were recurring interview questions that I've also seen come out in other previous uh, inter um, job interviews I have applied for. So I just had to revisit them or probably add something into that um, into the documents I shared with you guys, into my data analysis technical interview documents I do have personally for myself. So I updated that and I showed that I had that um, up to date, right? So yeah, in addition, one thing I would also love for you to understand is that when you're applying for a job, and this is something that I know a lot of you have heard a lot of times, right? Frankly speaking, I mean, I was just looking at my job role, the job role I applied for, and I noticed that for most part of the roles or skills that you are asked to do, I don't, I don't even know them up until now. Neither do I even see my current place of work. However, if you meet at least 50% or 70%, give it a shot. Actually, if you're a lady, right, I highly encourage that you do not beat yourself out and think you're not capable enough, right? Even if you meet 50%, it seems, it seems like a cliche, but I'm telling you that even if you meet 50% of a particular job requirement, go for it and apply. The worst you can actually get is a no, right? However, you try your best and you know that you've actually applied for that particular role. So I highly recommend that even if you meet, even if it's just 50% of that particular role, ensure you apply for it. And what this also does is that it boosts your confidence. And if you're also able to even make it to interview rounds, it shows your level of like competence or assessment to some sense, right? And if you're fortunate enough to have interviewers that provide feedback, you also learn from the feedback, right? So it's important not to show circuit yourself as seem like uh, because you don't have a past class, you don't apply for it. That shouldn't actually be the case, right? So it's highly recommended that you actually and very importantly, you go for any role that you at least meet 50% of that role. So some final advice I actually have here that I just want to put out there is that ensure you have a good enough resume. I have to write this thing down, like good enough resume, resume as well as projects also show for it. So leverage on your GitHub as well too. 
Also, do not box yourself to just one type or niche or industry. Right? Don't box yourself to one type of industry entirely. Be flexible enough and open to learn new things and have a wide range of options, right? So it's also important that you're firm with yourself on core reasons as to why you want to make a company over another company, right? Because this way you're able to showcase and have different um, reasons as to why you rather want this job compared to another job. Could it be based on work-life balance, pay, compensation, learning budgets or the likes, right? And this is actually based on your personal reference. Also, in addition, one thing I looked at is the fact that when you're also looking for a bonus for so it's important for you to also take note of the new skills or tools or technology you have to learn, right? The beginning of my career, right? I've come from a place whereby I had to use Microsoft Power BI because we're literally like more like Microsoft partners, right? And I'm in a place where for most tools, especially like the analytical tools I'm using here, entirely new and they're literally like the modern data stack, right? And I'm done a video about it right and i have learned a whole lot of things in terms of the tools we're using technologies we're using even a few of the analytical engineering tools that i also have to learn as well too. so it's also important that even if you do not meet that requirement or that job role it's just important for you to apply for the role because for the skill i had in microsoft power bi it just i could also apply it in my current place of work right because I had background knowledge of it's right and i'm quite fortunate or like say blessed that while I was applying for the role, one thing my manager manager actually actually mentioned was that don't worry, you actually um, one thing she mentioned was the fact that I would actually get to learn the tool on the job, right? And that's literally what I'm doing, right? So for most part of the role that you see that I think you don't have knowledge of on, apply for it, give it a, a shot, right? And because even this tool I even got to, I'm using currently my piece of work is quite new. There are a lot of new things that have been incorporated, so it's literally learning on the job so do not shoot yourself out or keep yourself out because you don't know a particular tool because frankly speaking when you get in there you also find out that a lot of people also do not know it but they're just learning on the job as well so just ensure that you don't keep yourself out by not giving yourself like that chance to actually apply for that job that you really want to go for and yes ensure to leverage linkedin like it's very important and give recommendations to people who also need a job in canada you could get tough sometimes and sometimes speaking to people as well who are in this space literally helps them to stay motivated thank you so much guys for watching if you have any questions let me know this is just one out of the many questions that i do receive and i just thought to put it out there saying that i love randomly ask this question a lot also i think one video i love to also add or put out there is that in terms of negotiating your salary also understand that whatever i pay you see is not what you're gonna like you still kind of what you take home right um i'm coming from a background whereby um we know what like i expected take home would be based on that salary right but here in canada um you literally have to break it down based on like several deductions and i think that one video i want to put out there to explain to you how when you sign an offer you understand what each of different components in that offer represents in terms of your pay right so yeah till next time um ensure to have a great day and uh, thank you so much for watching ensure to like share and subscribe as well bye guys